Tonight, we continue our Four Investigates team reports looking at issues impacting New Mexico's natural resources. And Chief Meteorologist Jorge Torres looks at our state's most precious resource, water. Life in the desert means water management, treatment, and conservation is essential to maintain our way of life, essentially, or especially, I should say, for future generations. So we need more water. You know, we're looking at water shortages in the future. In a de desert situation, what we think is the best way to do it is you make full available to the, of all your opportunities. El agua es vida. Water is life. It's a saying older than New Mexico itself, but its meaning is more important now than ever before. Just because New Mexico saw a monstrous winter in a typical monsoon this year, water shortages are still expected in the future. It's a big challenge to figure out how we're going to deal with um, you know, less water. Admittedly, this has been a good year in New Mexico. Snowpack that melted into a Rio Grande was the largest amount since 1997. Elephant Butte Lake, the largest reservoir in New Mexico and a place that many look to when it comes to gauging where we are with the drought is the highest it's been in almost a decade. However, even with all the runoff, Elephant Butte Lake is not even a third full. Dr. David Dubois, New Mexico state climatologist, says a warming trend in the southwest is strongly affecting snowpack, snowmelt timing, and more rain instead of snow during the winter months. That means less water in the long run. We've seen a decrease in that, the amount of water delivered to farmers who grow chilies or um, you know cotton and pecans down here in Las Cruces. Um, you know that then we have to come up with alternative sources of water. That's where New Mexico faces a daunting problem. Major cities like Albuquerque get drinking water largely from the Rio Grande. The city once took drinking water from the city's aquifer, but that was depleting faster than it was replenishing. Now, water managers are looking at other alternatives. John Stopp is the architect of the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Water Utility Authority's 100-year plan called Water 2120, which looks at warming trends and population growth. We kind of looked at things that we never really did and we went out a hundred years to make sure that when we're planning, we're actually doing planning. With New Mexico's climate trending warmer, Stomp says the time to think about future water management is now. The 100 year plan looks at the potential for losing some resources from climate change. So if we lost 20 or 30 percent of our San Juan Chama water, say in the next 80 years, we're really looking at reusing all the existing resources we have. Not far away, one city has already taken action. So this is the control room of the plant. El Paso. It's a very uh, compact plant, as you, as you see. El Paso Water operates the largest inland desalination plant in the world. It is here where up to 27 million gallons of the area's salty groundwater is filtered every day and a new supply of fresh water is made. We have Rio Grande, we have two different aquifers for groundwater, we have reclaimed water, and we have brackish water. So this is part of our water supply portfolio, we call it. El Paso is also using another, yet less popular method. It involves water that was once flushed down the toilet. Whatever could be flushed down a pipe, you're gonna find. I smell money, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I smell. This reclamation plant was one of the first in the nation to take sewer water and turn it into safe drinking water. The treated water here gets sent to the local aquifer before it is treated again for El Paso residents to drink. If you're curious what it tastes like, I tried it out myself. From wastewater to drinking water. That's good water. Even so, El Paso water admits it's an idea even El Pasoans are still trying to swallow. But they don't know all these steps that go into it, all these man hours, all these chemicals. This whole process is meant to make drinking water, but still people are a little, you know, they're not on board with it yet because they're not really educated as far as what goes into it. Don't be surprised if El Paso's approach to water management eventually makes it here. With water shortages a major concern, New Mexico communities and leaders continue to explore options to preserve our water, our livelihood, in the desert. The landscape of Albuquerque is going to change. As you know, it already has. It's going to continue to change. But the water sources that we're using are going to change too in the future. So you mentioned El Paso. 
You went down there, you drank the water yourself. Sure yeah. Kudos to you. Any chance, really, that the Duke City could do that? Well, the plan we talked about includes a lot of water treatment alternatives. And yes, it does include sewer water. In fact, the city of Rio Rancho and the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Water Utility Authority have been treating sewer water for years and putting it into the Rio Grande after mm -hmm. numerous filtrations. But as far as drinking that water, we're going to have to wait a while, at least a decade before anything like that is in the works. So for those of you who are kind of a little eh about it, skeptical, skeptical just yeah. wait a while. We're, we're fine for the time being. But down the road, different story.